fine. I'm, I'm getting a lot of feedback. You are? Myself. You're cutting out a little bit. Too loud. You're, you're cutting out. Let me see. Talk once. I've seen this happen before. Talk again. Hello. All right. You don't seem to be cut. All right. I'm going to talk about you for a sec and, and tell me if I'm cutting out. Okay. Am I, yeah. am I cutting out when I talk to you? Maybe I just have to. You're at first Zoom of the day, so you're unfortunately my guinea pig. Yeah, no worries at all. How's that? Yeah, that's good. All right, because I'm not right. hearing the feedback now. I just had to turn my volume down a little bit. Oh, got it. Okay, so you guys, this is John Kane. He has been with Prep Home, uh, where my husband works for 30 years. Um, John is what I would call the epitome of a man who builds relationships. I seriously don't know if there's anybody better anywhere. Um, his door, on his, um, the sign on his door says, helping people do stuff. He doesn't take credit for what he does. You picture Melissa's role, kind of, except for I look at Jack, John runs all of Butco, basically. He, is, he knows everybody. He works for everyone from the 20-year-old sales reps to the owners of the company. He pleases everybody. He doesn't forget a birthday. He doesn't forget a special occasion. I mean, it's, it's crazy insane. I, I, do, I truly don't know anybody who is so good at relationships. Every trip we go on with Cutco, he is the one making sure everybody is happy and setting things up, and he doesn't sleep if, if he knows you're unhappy. So there's nobody better to talk about about building relationships than, than this guy. Um, so he um, has a wife, Tracy, who I love too, and three kids, um, John Jr., Matt, oh, I almost forgot Natalie, and Natalie, and he loves yoga. He actually said he would do our yoga oh. for us. <laughs> his, his wife just opened up her own yoga studio. John teaches yoga too, and um, he loves music and concerts. I actually, Will Ma, if you wanted to go to a concert in Nashville next week to see Dave Matthews, but my kids are in a church musical, so I had to say no. <laughs> Well, I think this is more important than Dave Matthews. And I told you Logan sings the choir. You don't get that, right? So, yeah. I think that's about, I think that's what I got for you. So, I'm super excited to hear you tell us about relationships, John. And I'm going to go sit in a chair. Deb. I need to bring you everywhere I go. That was really nice. <laughs> right, right? Yeah. No, it's really true. It's not made up at all. You could teach Jeff some good tips on uh, on NCing. I think Jeff might be listening to you, by the way. I know. I know. But I think Jeff might be listening to me, man. You think he is? In a hotel. Oh, he is? Are you, that's right. You kicked him out, huh? I like that. Well. I just want to say thank you, Deb, for the opportunity to spend a little time with everybody. Hi, everybody. Um, I think the first thing I'd want to say is that I really respect and honor when people take time to uh, just come together to be better. And I really believe in the power of taking a step back and taking a retreat so that we can move forward. Um, one of the things I'm going to share with you today, and I just want to let you know, I see a lot of you have notes and you're taking notes and that's great. But I want to invite you today, if you just want to receive from most of this message and really listen and, you know, kind of as you, as you think about today, there's a handout that I'm going to be sending Debbie that has almost everything I'm saying written down word for word. And so that way, I don't want you to feel like if I'm saying something, you have to write it down. Um, I'm assuming there is something you'll want to write down. Maybe there won't be. You don't know. Uh, in that case, it's a good chance to wake up and, uh, and, and just uh, rest a little bit before a busy day. But hopefully there's something that connects here. Um, I spent some time um, before I prepared this message um, to really try to adapt it uh, more uh, toward um, your business and not have it be kind of a standard Cutco message. And yesterday I interviewed a friend who was a VP of Dove Chocolate and she shared some insight with me from her experience, uh, you know, which, and I was, I've been able, I've been preparing for this by asking some people some of their thoughts and sharing some thoughts um, that I have. And so um, 
I just want to, again, reiterate that when you take time to take a step back, really great things happen. And I think one of the things that is tricky about um, being in sales is that, you know, when I first started selling Cutco, I really wasn't sure what the deal was. I mean, these people seemed pretty fired up and they were always excited. They were working hard. And I really just didn't get the whole uh, sales thing. I was younger and uh, my jobs before this had been in construction and working in restaurants. And um, it took me a while really to figure some things out. And even as the years went by and I was with Cutco for a number of years, it really wasn't into until a period of time uh, in my 30s where I really, um, something really clicked for me. And so part of, one of the things we're gonna talk about today are just some questions that can help you in making connections and building relationships as leaders. Um, I think we all crave authenticity and we all want to be known and understood. That to me is just a fundamental truth and i think one of the reasons that people sometimes are attracted to to business or business opportunity like this is they're craving something different and they're craving to be connected um the tricky part of all that is that you know um in cutco we talk about our cutco family and people say well is it really a family or are we just trying to sell sell stuff are we just trying to sell knives you know is it is it business is it family what what is it and the answer is i think um, that's up for you to decide as things progress. One of the things that I realized um, when I was 38 years old is that I had spent a lot of years um, with this company and building relationships, um, but something really hit home. So part of what I want to do today to start is to tell you an important part of my story, which will help you understand why giving a message like this is really important to me. Uh, I made a commitment uh, a little over 11 years ago that I wanted to share stories about relationships because I'd been impacted so much uh, by people in my life. Um, we've all had ups and downs. We're all probably right now in the place where things could be really great. You could be struggling with something. My experience is, is that generally everybody's struggling with something and everybody has some things that are going good. It's never really all perfect. Perfect. And in 2008, I got a phone call that changed my life. And um, what had happened, it was in September, and in the beginning of the week, um, there was some things happening in the financial world. And I remember, you know, I'm not super focused on that type of stuff, but I think it was at the time when all the markets kind of crashed. And I remember looking at just the investments from saving for a number of years, and everything was kind of cut in half. And I remember thinking, wow, my, my investments are in bad shape. And that was on a Monday. <clears throat> on Thursday, I had got a call, and the call was from my brother David, and he told me that my youngest brother, Michael, had died of a drug overdose. And I, it was tragic. I was in shock. And if you've lost people or had that experience, you know that that's the type of thing that can really shake your foundation. Well, my parents were in a really tough state and they didn't really want anyone coming to the funeral. And so I had to tell a lot of people that I worked with at Cutco and Factor that, hey, it was a private family event. And, you know, we're really just not going to, uh, we're not going to accept people to come. And um, I remember feeling that that was difficult for me because I, I really liked a lot of the people I worked with and over the years had really come to uh, enjoy and really love a lot of the people I worked with. That was difficult. A few days later, I got a call from the owner of our company and CEO, and he said, hey, I'd like you to come over to the house and uh, just stop over. Natalie and I would like to have you come over. And when I went over to the house, um, there were 150 people there that had flown in from all over the country, uh, had driven many hours, and uh, they had a memorial service for my brother, and it wasn't a company-sponsored event. Um, and one of the things I got a chance to experience at that age, at 38, was to realize that um, all these years of selling Cutco and all these years of being in a business where I was putting a lot of effort and energy into the business side of it had really resulted in something beautiful. And I remember... 
uh, my feeling at the beginning of the week being concerned about my investments. And I remember having the feeling that Thursday that my investments were just fine. And I want to share today that it's so easy to um, approach something like what I'm going to say we are doing or you're doing uh, from the strict standpoint of the numbers and the sales. But I would propose to you that there are things that you can't measure uh, in a paycheck and on a balance sheet that are far more important. And I truly believe, you know, I have this one uncle, and I don't know if you've had anybody, you know, kind of give you any good natured ribbing or kind of roll their eyes or raise an eyebrow when you told them what you were doing. You know, I have this one uncle, Clem. He's married, to, well, I don't think he's married to my Aunt Ray. He's been kind of shacking up with her for a long time and kind of living off of her. And uh, he's like one of my most negative relatives. And so this has been 30 years, and every time I show up at a family event, he says, are you still selling those stupid knives? And, <laughs> and uh, you know, maybe you're Cutco customers, maybe you're not, but that's okay. That's not the point here. Um, I really think they're good knives, and I really think the people that have them like them, and I know if they break, we'll fix them. And I've always felt really good about what I did. And someone would say, well, what's the big deal? Well, for me, I think if you can bring a little joy and ease into someone's life, that can make a big difference. And one of the things I can say is two years ago, we were on a company trip and Debbie was just starting with Color Street. And I was blown away because she was literally running a meeting in the hotel lobby throughout the whole trip. She was supposed to be there on vacation and she was corralling people and like sitting them down, get your wife, get your wife, get this person. And one of the things I remember thinking before this all happened was, you know, when you have passion like that and you really like what you're doing, I could really tell that Debbie believed in the product and she really was excited about it. She liked it herself. And I thought, you know, with something like that, if there's a good company behind it, this really could go somewhere. Well, you know, that was two years ago. And obviously things have, uh, you know, we're not sitting here today, probably if something didn't happen. And um, I just want to say that in my mind, you know, the relationship piece of this is important. And it's so great if you can build a business where you can have great relationships and you can also represent something that you love. And so, you know, I think it's very common uh, to get overwhelmed when you're in this type of business. Even 30 years into it, there are times where I feel overwhelmed uh, with, because it constantly challenges me to look in the mirror and ask myself, Hey, am I doing my best? What does better look like? You know, questions like that. And, um, and I know that if you're sitting in that room, that it's not all rainbows and unicorns. There's challenges that you're facing. And there's no way you're taking a whole Saturday or Sunday and coming together if you're not trying to be better. But I would say that um, it took me a while to figure certain things out uh, as I grew up and matured a little bit, at least. And um, one of the things I realized was that um, I really realized that the relationships were the greatest treasure from all of this. Now, I think it's awesome if you've got financial goals. I think if it's awesome if you have, everybody's got different reasons for doing this. Um, but I think it's important to understand as you're bringing people into your organization that fundamentally there's some distrust for sales or there's anytime you combine a financial relationship with a relationship there's always just that thing in the back of your head like hey do they really like me or is it they just want me to sell more stuff and I remember being a new Cutco rep and I'm like they always have another contest I figured it out you know uh, or there's always a new announcement or a new promotion I figured out what they're up to yeah and you know I just started telling people yeah we'd like you to sell more but in the meantime we'd like you to be happy in the process and we'd like you to be enjoying it and so I think um, the key to doing anything for more than a, a couple of months is you'll make a connection with why this is important as part of your process in your life. And I stayed with Cutco a long time because I still like who I'm becoming and I still am being challenged and I'm still learning. That's the reason I'm still here. Uh, and um, I'm, I'm challenged still all the time. I'm not an expert on anything, and you know, Debbie gave me a nice, uh, nice introduction, and that, that really feels good. Um, but the truth is, I've screwed up a lot of things in relationships. Uh, I screwed up my first marriage. I've let friends down. I've not followed through on things. Uh, I have missed birthdays, you know, and 
there have been a lot of things that I haven't done right, but over the years, I've really just tried to study people who had great relationships, great families, so that I could be better at it. And I am passionate about it, and I'd like to share some of those things with you today. Now, all that I just said wasn't written down, but um, I wanted to at least connect with why giving this message means something to me personally. Um, I want you to consider yeah. this thought, and this is where the stuff's written down. Can you guys hear me okay still? Yeah, I yelled you're awesome. Can you hear me? I, I didn't, I thought maybe you said I can't hear you. <laughs> But, that, but thank you, Dad. I need, like I said, I need you to, maybe we'll trade. You come to my meetings, I'll come to your meetings. This would be good. <laughs> um, so I'm going to dive into some of the message. And this is the part that's written down. And here's what I want to say. These are things that I say to people. It may not fit exactly with your business. I did the handout trying, I even wrote like beautifully polished relationships as the title. I thought that was pretty cool. Um, but uh, maybe not. But uh, the idea here is this is similar to a message I give in Cutco where um, I just share things that I say that help me in relationship building. So what I recommend that you do is obviously you're going to have to take some of this back and see how it fits in your business. But I think over the message, you'll get a feel of how this builds. Um, the fundamental thing is that I believe that when you ask good questions, it builds a bridge for people to connect with the best you and Color Street have to offer. I don't know about you, uh, my wife Tracy does not like me to tell her anything. In fact, if I tell her something, she automatically takes the approach of saying, yeah, I'm not sure. Um, and I've learned that when, I'm, when we're communicating, if I ask her questions, um, our conversations go a lot better. And when I tell her stuff, um, not so much. So the, you know, the principle, and I'll just share that um, part of the training that Cutco has been nice enough to help me have has been some training in a process called appreciative inquiry, which really is just around the idea of asking questions and um, really from a positive standpoint so that you can have good conversations. So, I'm going to give you what I would call the basics today. Then I'm going to cover, I'm going to cover three levels of conversation. Again, this is all written out. Um, I believe that the most basic thing that you can um, share with somebody when you don't know someone, and I believe it's possible that in that room, I don't know the relationships, but I'm fairly certain that even in that room, there are people that don't know each other. Maybe you've seen each other, you've been on calls together. But I think the power of a retreat or time like this is you get to know each other. I used to get, you know, early in my years, I took the job selling Cutco because I wanted to be a third grade teacher. And I was nervous about telling the parents that their kids weren't doing well. Somehow I thought that was what the job was. Uh, but I remember being young and thinking, man, I'm really nervous about that. And I remember being in situations, social situations where I didn't always know what to say or what to do, and I was worried that I would look or sound stupid, or I wouldn't, I wouldn't say it as good as some of the other people in Cutco, and I, I had some insecurities early on. One of the things that I learned that really helped, and if this is the only thing that you take away from the message, um, this is something that 75% of the time really helps me to get comfortable with people, um, and I just simply ask them to tell me their stories, and. Um, I find that when you ask people their story, um, there's so much you can learn just by listening. And I truly believe that the key, one of the keys to tremendous relationships is to really do a lot of listening and try to be a good listener. Um, so a lot of times as people tell me their story, I may ask them, you know, another, another question I'll often ask is, hey, what's something that you're proud of uh, personally or professionally? Another question I'll often ask is, what's something that most people would never guess about you that you're proud of? I like that question because people aren't often comfortable either bragging or sharing things and getting people comfortable sharing something that they're proud of that most people would never guess. It, it allows you to kind of get on a much more intimate level. So those three questions, tell me your story, what's something you're proud of personally or professionally, What's something most people would never guess about you that you're proud of? 
These are all questions that are great for opening up a meeting, they're opening up a conversation. Um, but the fourth thing that I have on the list when you get it, you'll see is, is bolded. And one of the things that I've learned is that, I don't know if you've ever had this happen to you, where someone asked you a question and then you answered it, but before you were really done, they just jumped in and started talking over you. Has anybody experienced that phenomenon where someone just jumps in and talks over you? Well, that happens, that's happened to me a lot in my extended family. And I realize that they're not really listening. One of the ways that you can show someone that you're listening, I have found very effective is when they share something, I often will say, tell me more. Tell me more about that. Because people I find usually will share a little bit, but when they're encouraged to share more, they'll, they'll tell you more. When people are nice enough to share with me, I'll often say, thanks for sharing that. Is there anything else you want, want to share that would help me to get to know you or work with you better? Again, this is all written out. But I think when you thank someone for sharing or you ask them to tell me more, it really acknowledges them. And a fundamental thing in a real relationship and a good relationship is people want to feel acknowledged. One of the things I noticed in our business and when I visit a lot of our managers is Though we have a daily call-in time where people call in and share their sales report. And I watch a lot of our newer, newer and younger managers, they'll, you know, they'll say, hey, how are you? And really before that person can even answer, they'll say, well, how many appointments do you have today? And how many, you know, what have you lined up? And what are your results? And, you know, uh, I realize we're all in business and numbers are important, but um, I want, I, one of the things I loved about Cutco's over time is I really felt like a person working with Cutco, not as a number. <laughs> and I think um, that is something that I think a lot of people aspire to. And so one of the things I often coach uh, our people on is when someone shares something, to thank them. Hey, thanks for sharing that. Is there anything else you would want to share uh, that you want me to know or that would help me to work with you better? I also think when people are in a space where you're sharing something with them and they receive it, it's important to acknowledge that. And one of the things that's a basic thing I often say to people is, hey, you're a great listener or you're very coachable. I think that's so important in life. Do you want me to teach you some things I learned here when I started to help you get even better than you are now? So I think when you think about bringing people into onto your team or into the organization, Sometimes we just talk at people. We tend to talk at people because we've got a lot of knowledge and enthusiasm. Um, but I think getting permission is a really powerful concept with people. When I ask someone, do you want me to teach you some things I learned here when I started to help you get even better than you are now versus I got some things I'm going to teach you. You know, I think it's that, that subtle difference is one of the things that can help a relationship start to build. So I'm going to pause right now um, before I go into some next level questions. And I just want to ask, um, is any of this landing so far? Um, is any of this connecting? And again, you know, the basics that, uh, you know, I've experienced working with Cutco, I think they may translate here. I'd be curious to know um, if anything's landing, what, ha you know, if you would share, if you'd be willing to share What's something that's landed so far? What's something that you're connecting with? What's something that, you know, I, I'd just be curious to get a little bit of feedback right now. And this, by the way, this isn't my, for my own self-edification. I, um, I think that anytime you're with a group of people and you're just talking to people, I, I prefer it be more conversational. And um, I think from some of the feedback that you give, it will help me know as we go into the next section, which points maybe to dig a little more into. So. Um, let's do th two or three shares if you're willing. Yes, yeah, um, I love like the, the sentence starters, like the prompts where you could say like, tell me more. Um, I, I love that. Like if, even sharing something that you're proud of, um, I think everyone would love to share that and have that opportunity. And then to say, tell me more shows that active listening. And I'm an English teacher. So this is something that I'm always working on with my students. So this is perfect. Like to cover both, you know, my professional as far as teaching and 
the direct sale. So that's awesome. I love it. Thank you. I have, go ahead, go ahead Jen. I just went over the list is that you referenced, John. I, I have. Oh, so we'll get that later. Yeah, I just, okay. I want everyone to watch him. So. Oh, great. Okay, thank you so yeah. much. I think this is really valuable information. Um, I also like the fact that you were brave and courageous enough to share with us that you gave yourself grace in making mistakes in the past. Yeah. That gives us all hope that, oh, I really sucked in the past, but boy, am I going to be better. So yeah. thank you. Yeah, in fact, tell me your name. Oh, no. Tina. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Tina Doyle. <laughs> no. Well, um, I'd like to, I'd like to say that I feel like, because I can't, I can't see everybody on the sides. I can see, oh, now I can see it. There you go. I got you. <laughs> uh, perfect. Got you. I'm Jackie King, John, you're my, you're my, um, now I, know, now I know it's you, Jackie. Uh, oh, oh. <laughs> you're a handsome man. Um, I talk about building relationships. He, he, uh, I thought we were like in the safe zone. I didn't know he was back in town. This is great. Um, that's good. Some of these things may help him. So this is good. This is good. Thanks for letting me sit in. Um, I had to get up for a sec. I don't know if Jackie had said this, but the one thing I loved was your um, asking permission. When we first talk to a stylist, we have a call called a let's get started call. I think that'd be a great way to say in that very first call, say, you know, I have a great plan for your success. Would you like me to teach you? And then get, yeah. and then tell them instead of like you said, just vomiting at them, yeah. but asking if that's what they want. I love that. Well, if they say no, if they say no, then say you're sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to know on my phone. Oh, that's funny. Uh, I I find that um, I have had people at times push back and say, I don't know if I'm ready for that right now, you know, or I'm not sure. And what's really great. I, mean, it's, I think it's a great question. What if they say no? I'd like to speak to that for a moment if I could. Yeah. There's no question in the work that we're doing. We're going to face resistance. And that's usually based on the fact that people aren't sure. They're not sure what they want to do or how they feel. And I'd rather identify that in a way by asking permission than trying to kind of run them over. And then find out later that not only did I run them over, but I ran them out of the business because they felt like I wasn't listening uh, or, or at least interested in how they might be feeling about things. I think if you're sitting in that room and if you've been in direct sales, um, it really challenges you mentally sometimes. And I share with our people all the time that even 30 years into this, I think about quitting sometimes and doing something else. And people say, oh, no, you don't. That's ridiculous. Um, there are times when things can be you know, challenging or overwhelming, wherever level that you're at. And I think if we realize that, that we don't know what someone's experiencing, I like to just assume that things aren't perfect and that maybe by me asking permission or being a little more gentle in the process, that that's going to build trust where a person knows that they don't have to be perfect, they don't have to have the exact numbers, do it exactly like everybody else, that there's a way for that. And so um, I'm gonna to speak to some of the next level questions and we'll, you know, I'm, I'm gonna make myself available to just do some Q&A if you guys wanna do that today. Um, but I, I wanna respect your time. So some, I'm gonna go through these a little more quickly because you got, you'll have the hand. But these are some next level questions. This is as I've, gotten to know someone a little bit, or I'm working to get to know someone a little bit better, I often will ask them to tell me a story about their favorite role model, a mentor, a coach, or someone that they look up to. Um, what was it about the way they handled themselves that you appreciated? When I, you know, one of my heroes is my mom. She raised six of us. Um, she's experienced a lot of challenges in her life, uh, and we won't get into all that. Uh, I'm happy to share at some point, but the point is, I, my mother is one of my role models. I love my dad dearly, but my mom's one of my heroes. And um, I didn't always feel that way in my teens and my 20s and my 30s, but becoming a dad 
and really uh, getting to know my mom uh, and really seeing that role. Um, you know, she is one of those people. So I could talk about that. But if you're in the room, there's probably someone in your life that when you think about that's been a role model, a mentor, a coach, or someone you look up to. And you know why that is. I think when two people can connect in that way, it's a really powerful connection. That's a real authentic conversation. And it's not about selling something. It's about, you know, sharing something. Um, one of the things I love to do is when I see people doing things right, I always love to just say, I've been noticing how you handle yourself. I'm impressed. Who taught you that? Who are the people in your life that you look up to? You know, I think when we can acknowledge people, um, it's, it's such a simple thing. I remember being, you know, in my 20s and some of the people in Cutco simply saying, hey, I, I see that you're working really hard. And you know what? I wasn't selling the most at the time. And I have to tell you, that meant a lot to me because I wasn't the top salesperson. I wasn't the top performer. I wasn't the top. Uh, there, was a, there were people in the office I was in that were much better than me. But when one of the assistants just said, hey, I notice how hard you're working. I'm impressed with that. Who taught you your work ethic? So these, this is something that I think with people that we have to acknowledge things other than just the hard results to, to create fertile ground for those results to come. I really believe that when people feel whole, when people feel seen, and when people feel acknowledged, that's when the results show up. And, you know, when they feel good, good things happen. Um, you know, every day you make a choice about what you want to do with your time, your effort, and your energy. And there's a lot of things pulling on that. I know that in Petco all the time. And so I like to just give people reasons um, to want to work harder here without, uh, without a feeling like, you know, it, it's all or nothing type of feel. Um, when I meet someone who shares ideas or asks questions, I'll just ask them, where did you learn how to communicate your ideas so well? And when you think about building a team of leaders and building an organization of leaders, we want people that um, value good communication. So um, I also, you know, for me, I, I have felt for a long time that, hey, in life, it's not important to be liked by everyone, and you don't have to like everybody. Um, you know, it's, uh, you know, I think in my youth, in high school, I, I spent a lot of energy wanting to be liked uh, and thinking that, you know, I, I had a lot of different misconceptions in my teens. But one of the things I started realizing is that I could make choices about who I spent my time around. Um, I met Jeff, Debbie's, uh, Jeff, you know, you know, he's Deb's husband, right? So um, I met Jeff when I was, uh, we were, I was 23, 24 years old. And we I both won a contest and I met thousands of people in the Vector business. But I spent a day with Jeff Fry and I remember thinking at the end of that day that that's a guy I want to know for the rest of my life. And I remember thinking of all the people I had met, even friends in college and friends at that time, that this was a really special guy. And um, he was generous spirit, great heart, just uh, uh, nice hair. I wish I had hair like that. Um, and, um, you know, I think that, uh, I think that when you think about people you want to be around, um, it's important to make decisions. So when I meet someone in the business that I'm either working with or you're interested in working with, I always tell them, you're a lot of fun to be around. I like working with fun people. Who are your role models for great energy in the way you present yourself? So I think if you want more of something, you, you should recognize it. So when someone's fun or someone's interesting or someone's intelligent, it's not just fun. It could be any of those things. I think it's really important that we see people and the things that we love about them. I'm teaching my children that it's so easy to pick people apart and it's so easy to look for the thing that's wrong. But it, I am encouraging my children to be good finders and to really look for the thing that's right. Let's look for what we love about a person and about people. And let's focus on that versus focusing on what's not there. I can make you a long list of the, the anti-introduction to the thing Deb, the things Deb said about me today. I'm a little unorganized. I lose a lot of stuff. Uh, sometimes I forget important details. I can make you a long list, but I've never found it really to focus on the things that I'm not good at. 
Um, and I think with people, as you're building relationships, you know, there's always gonna be things about people. You know, my wife and I, we've been married 16 years, and there are some things that just have not changed about her or me since that started. And, um, I, and I think that what I keep reminding myself is that, hey, I really like Tracy. She's honest, she's kind, and I trust her, and we have a good time together. And there are things like, um, you know, she may or may not be on time ever. Uh, but uh, just learn to let that go and just not be angry about it. I used to be angry about it all the time. And I just had to realize, like, what am I doing? You know, she's, she's got all these great qualities. And uh, so I think in, when you recognize what you like about people, that's one of the ways to really cultivate a great relationship. And it can't be fake. Like, you can't just say something to somebody because you're trying to say something. Really try to identify what you like about a person. And that means a lot of times you have to spend some time to get to know them, and that's where the questions come in. You know, when you see someone in the organization who's really trying to learn, I'll often say, hey, you're really picking up on the things we teach. It seems like you're enjoying the job. There are a lot of valuable things we can teach you. Do you want to learn more? As you realize, there's always another level of leadership to aspire to. It's one of the things I like about Cutco and, and companies in our industry. And there's always another event, conference, learning. I've been going to events and conferences for 30 years. And I'll tell you, I still enjoy them because um, even if after many years, I know that I'm better when I take a step back and take stock of where things are so I can move forward. Um, one of the things that's important, too, is if you've been doing this for a little while, you know, sometimes people look to you like you're on a pedestal and they don't realize you're struggling with the same things that they are, same challenges, same problems. And it's important, I think, sometimes to let people know, hey, I remember when I started here. I know you've only been here for a short time. What impressions do you have of this opportunity and how it could help you for the future? So when someone's new, a lot of times, you know, you can say, hey, what do you think of the job, you know, or what do you think of it? And it kind of puts someone in a box because they, gotta, they feel like they're being forced to say something positive. And I think that when we can relate to people, I remember when I started here, it was a little overwhelming. I know you've only been here for a short time. What impressions do you have so far about how this opportunity could help you in the future? Um, another simple question that's a next level question is asking people what they want most. And, you know, if you talk to someone in, in selling Cutco, a lot of times we have people that it's not their full-time thing, it's a part-time thing. And of course, you know, it is my full-time thing and it's in, in the management side of thing, it can be a full-time thing, but there's constant tension between this being someone's full-time thing and a thing that they're interested in. There's always different levels of commitment. And I found that by asking people, what do you want most right now? And it can be in different categories. And I'll say, hey, you know, it, it, as I'm getting to know someone, I try to understand what they want most, um, if they're willing to share, you know, in some personal areas. It could be family, it could be faith, it could be um, goals, it could be financial. But I think when we know what people want most, we have a better idea of how to, um, just really how to relate to them in a relationship. I have worked with many people who have come out and told me, I don't care about contests. I don't care about, in our case, scholarships. I don't care about money. I just really like being part of something and helping people. I really like the product. I like showing it to people. It's fun for me. It's a nice distraction from what my life is like on a daily basis. It's a nice diversion. And so if I keep promoting to someone money, to someone who doesn't care about money, that relationship is going to disintegrate because that person's gonna really get that I'm not, I'm, that they're not, I don't know them. And they're not, and in some way they may feel like I'm not seeing them. Um, one of the things that is important, and this is not written down, but I think it's important um, when you're working with people, um, it's actually written down at the end, but to let people know that, hey, I'm not perfect, I'm gonna make mistakes. If I ever make you feel in a way that's not comfortable, can we make an agreement that you'll let me know and I'll do the same? And I think when you think about relationships, um, it's so important to establish the fact that if something's not going well, we can just talk about it and figure it out. 
And I, I often just try to take the approach that I'm not going to be perfect. I'm not, you know, um, people might say some nice things about me, but I make a lot of mistakes. And I think for people to see it as human in a leadership or a manager role is really important. Hey, if, I, I often say to the people I work with, if we work together a long time, I'm probably going to screw some things up. And hey, you might too. Probably not, but you might too. And hey, when that happens, how do we want to deal with that? How do we want to work through that? Um, I'm going to come up for air again here and let you know most of that was written down. And if it's recorded, then you have it. Um, but let me just come up for air and just say, you know, that's, so that's, there's a third part here, which is really building depth and strength in relationships. But some of those questions were a little more next level. Um, some of those that I just said, that's probably not the thing you say the first time you meet somebody. It's as you're getting to know people or as you're spending time. And I wanted to kind of build in some layers here because I know you're all at different parts of your business and in the relationships that you're building. So I'll just ask again, did anything in that second section land for you? Is there something that you can relate to? Or if you have something to add or to share with the group, I want to make sure that, um, you know, I'm not the only voice here in relationships. And uh, I'd love to hear some feedback if you have some. One of the things I took most, I think, is, oh, hold on, I'm not over here. Hi, I'm over here. <laughs> <laughs> um, what I really like is, like, asking them what they want most so that you can really make that personal connection. And like you said, if they're not interested in money and they're looking for something else, you can't focus on money because it's never going to help them build. And I think this, we're really about relationships on this team and just knowing how to ask, like, what do you want most is, uh, I think, going to be a big. Thank you. And, and I have an example of where I have a girl on my team who she doesn't even bonus qualify every month, but she's always on Facebook. She's always commenting, liking, you know, whatever, positive for the team. So I just sent her a thank you note saying, thank you. I appreciate you. The next day she signed up to go to our conference. So, and she's taking one of her teammates with her. So a girl who really wasn't doing anything sales wise had no intention, but just because I recognized her for being an important part of the team, now she's going to conference. So it, you know, it definitely helps to recognize people other than for their sales. Yeah. I'm going to go back to that book that you shared, that leadership yeah. book, right? Yeah. From, yeah. 80 percent of the people are there just to be there. They're, yeah. not, they're not necessarily in it for the money or anything. They're just happy to be a part of something. Oh, you want to tell us the book? I think a lot of us may have bought it. Uh, what was the name of that book? Highly, not highly effective. Ray Fishley. Was it Ray Hagen? Yeah. Ray Hagen. Ray Hagen. Previously effective leadership for network marketing. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. Have you heard of that book, Jen? I can, can you I hear it? I have children reading out the title. You guys are talking to me. I think it's Ray Hagen, Freakishly Effective Leadership for Network Marketing. I think what's the name of the book? That one, yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Freakishly Effective oh, yeah. Leadership for Network so Marketing. Oh, I love it. Nice. Yeah. There's one for just network marketing, too. I read that one, too. Yeah. Oh, Rob Sperry. Sure. Rob Sperry. Yeah. Sweet. Um, I know we're up against kind of a, a little bit of time here. Um, I, I'm taking my son to soccer at noon, and they're at a communion here this morning. So um, when they get back, I'll, I'll have to go. But you got a little time. Let me finish some of the last couple thoughts. And again, a lot of these are written out, but it, the, the category here is kind of in building depth and strength. And, you know, one of the things I'll often say to people as we're getting to know each other more is I'll say, you know, I've noticed that people who show great leadership skills have had to overcome some adversity in their life. I'm not trying to put, put you on the spot for any details, but if you face some challenges, is there anything you'd want to share that would help me work with you better? And I think that um, there's, a, there's a difference between prying into people's lives and being open to somebody sharing. Finding that delicate balance is a really tricky thing. Um, but if when you ask that question in the right way, I've had some profound um, breakthroughs in my relationships with people because I found that there were people I'd been working with for a long time, but they really had never shown themselves or were never 
comfortable or feeling vulnerable to show themselves. Um, but once we had had a connection around that, it helped me understand how to work with them better and a lot of different situations, but it could be a challenge they've had, it could be a loss, it could be something with relationships. But I think once you've had like a more intimate level conversation than sports, weather, sales, uh, you know, whatever the, whatever the surface level topics are, it helps. Um, I wrote down the question, I love that you're not afraid to learn new things and work hard. These are really key to doing one well life and selling and leading at Color Street. Who taught you these values? Why do you think you have them? It's another take on some of the earlier uh, conversation, but it's a combination of acknowledging their, their work ethic, learning things, and asking them where they got these values. You know, I think when we all can connect with where we got our values, that's a really powerful strength to come from. Um, I lived a lot of my adult life without really acknowledging that a lot of the strengths and gifts that I have really came from watching my mom, the way she, uh, with six kids, always took in strangers around the table. If someone was going through a tough time in our neighborhood, they were having dinner with us. Anybody that was getting divorced or anybody that was had a health issue, my mom was always uh, taking care of people. And I learned uh, most of my relationship skills really simply from the idea that when people were challenged, my mom would just show up. And, you know, it's one thing to be on the podium, getting a trophy and getting bonus checks, getting recognized, but it's who shows up for you in the valley or who shows up for you when you're struggling that really matters. I've had a couple times in my life uh, that made decisions, made mistakes, things I'm not proud of. And, you know, I got to tell you that Jeff has been the type of friend that, you know, it hasn't just been when uh, everybody's been waving the pom-poms. Jeff's been the type of friend during a tough time to get on a plane, fly out to New Jersey, and, you know, have a talk with me. And uh, I'll never forget a talk in 2010 where he flew out here. And, uh, you know, Jeff, he carries these little silver crosses with him, uh, and he gives them out. And he has one with him, uh, I think, most of the time. And uh, he essentially came and said, hey, I know you're going through a tough time, but, you know, just rely on God and uh, your friendships and you'll be able to get through this tough time. Um, you know, when we make, when him making an effort like that, we'd already been friends for a long time, but it was such a deepening of our relationship. And essentially, he could have said that on the phone. But I think one of the things I want to share with you around building depth and strength is you can do that on a Zoom call and you can do it on the phone, but having a cup of coffee with someone and getting face to face and eyeball to eyeball with people is where the magic really happens. And I think realizing that, um, I think is a way that you can build depth and strength. When you see someone that really enjoys a challenge, I try to acknowledge that and I often say, hey, it seems like you enjoy a challenge with something that you've accomplished or overcame in your life that was challenging that you're proud of. Again, it's a little, just a little deeper take on getting people to share things they overcame. Here's something that's interesting. You're going to have someone that you're working with, and you're, they're going to, they might be struggling to figure out your business. But when they can connect with a challenge they overcame in the past, it really just builds a bridge. Between, well, if I overcame that, I can overcome this. Because I think people really struggle with confidence when they're learning something new. And I think that if they can have as an anchor or a connection back to something else that they accomplished that was challenging, that can really be encouraging. A lot of times we forget, we tend to forget the victories that we've had and dwell on the losses, you know, and, uh, and I feel like you can help someone, you know, reflect back on something positive that they experience. It really helps. A lot of times I'll ask someone, how much leadership training have you had so far? You seem like you really enjoy opportunities to grow. Um, would you like me to include you in some of the things we do around here to give people access to advanced training? Again, it's a take on asking for permission. When I see people um, that, have, that seem interested or they seem positive or they seem like they you know, want to do, well, I'll just ask them, how much leadership training have you had? I really believe that you know, um, I, I don't remember every knife that I sold and I don't remember every customer. Um, but I really do remember a lot of the leadership and training meetings I've had at Cutco and Vector, and I can remember where I was when a key concept or a key point hit home, and I kind of had it one of those aha moments or a transformation or maybe kind of a fork in the road. And 
I think one of the most powerful things is I truly believe that this industry in general is worth um, our time because, you know, there's the thing that we're doing, selling knives, um, you know, or, or whatever it is that we're selling, but there's also what's, what we're becoming and what's happening. And I think if we can view what we do as a people development and leadership development business versus just a sales business, that's where it really gets exciting and we can see beyond, you know, beyond, beyond just, you know, the, beyond some of those obvious things. One of the things I'll often ask people that have potential, I'll say, would you like an extra call or meeting with me each week? I look for people who stand out. They don't have to be perfect. I wasn't. Your attitude and energy are positive. And I believe some extra coaching could make all the difference in your results. Again, that's written down. You've really done a good job getting the basics down. I think you're ready for the next level. Would you like me to include you in our leadership development process? I think inviting people um, versus promoting to people is a really powerful shift in leadership. And there's a certain amount of promotion we always have to do when we're promoting announcing things, but inviting people is much more intimate and much more welcoming. And if you can be great at inviting people um, versus uh, promoting to people, I think that's a, that's a shift. I think some of the things that people get uncomfortable with in sales is being pushy or being too forceful. And, you know, we all struggle with that. Even 30 years into this, sometimes I'm sensitive to how, you know, uh, you know, like I know everything that we do is really good, but sometimes I'm sensitive to how strong I am in approaching people. Um, final question there is, who do you lean on when things get challenging? I had a great support system when I started working here. Uh, what was cool is it really grew after being here for a while. I met a lot of really nice, like-minded people I stayed close with. Some of my friends went down negative paths. Can you relate to that? And when I started here, you know, again, I was in college and a lot of my friends were really kind of <laughs> going off the reservation. And Cutco really, um, I think, was a, such a great channel for me in a positive way than some of the people I was around. And I found that at age 19 and 20, starting here, I wanted to be around the people at Cutco more than I wanted to be around some of my <laughs> friends and family at the time, just based on some of those dynamics. There are people and maybe you're one of them um, who, you know, they want to be part of an organization where that's helping them be better, but just has a, a positive feeling because the reality is sometimes what's going on at home or what's going on um, in the world outside of this, this group or community, hey, might not be super positive. And this can be really a lighthouse or a encouraging thing for people. And I think we can't underestimate the fact that, yeah, we're selling knives, we're, we're selling, you know, we're selling the nail product, but the reality is um, we're really offering sanctuary and encouragement for people in a place where, you know, while we're selling something, we're building them and we're building their life. That's one of the reasons I've wanted to stay with Cutco selling these stupid knives for all these years. And I'm sure one of the reasons you're connecting as you bring joy and ease into people's lives. Um, people make fun of me because I don't really have a lot of hair, but I like to get my hair cut every week. Jeff will say, oh, you're going for your haircut. It's getting pretty bushy and unruly. And I get a haircut every week because I find a lot of joy in just sitting there for half an hour and getting my hair cut. And I know that there are people that you're working with every week who have a lot of joy every time they look at their, themselves and they feel good about themselves because of the way they look. It matters. And, you know, I'm not going to be on any uh, Chippendales calendars anytime soon, but um, I can have a clean haircut, you know, and I can feel pretty good about that. <laughs> and it's just a little thing that makes a big difference. And I feel like um, it's important, you know, and sometimes it's, it's easy to think like the thing that we're doing, how important is it? Um, but it, it is because um, when you're bringing joy and ease to people, um, that, can, that can ripple into other things. There's another section on the handout for high performers and or high potential top performers. Um, and I'll cover that quickly. So sometimes high potential top performers are, um, I've found in our business can be challenging to work with because they're very strong. Um, so I'll often say to someone, hey, I can tell you like to do things your own way. I respect that. In fact, I was the same way. I was actually borderline rebellious. I love that there are a lot of ways to achieve success here. There are a lot of different ways to establish 
you as a person of value and a leader. It's not cookie cutter. You could be your own person, have your own style. I'd like to offer to mentor you if you're interested. I had some people who just kind of didn't like doing what everybody else did, but I, they were interested. And so learning how to relate to people who just don't want to do what everybody does is a really powerful tool. Um, you know, one of the things I'll often say someone who has, I think is a high performer, has high potentials, I'll let them know. I take my role seriously and I challenge people to do their best all the time. I can also be with flexible with things you have going on in your life. Do you feel understood and supported? Do you feel challenged? How can I help you do even better? Do you, un do you feel understood and supported? Do you feel challenged? How can I help you to do even better? Um, often some of the best people that I worked with were busy with lots of things. And often I would just tell people, I love that you're busy and involved in lots of things. The fact is I find people like you are of incredible results in the long run because your standards and expectations are set higher. You're already challenging yourself in big ways. This won't be easy, but you're set up to do well if you just keep being yourself and working hard with a solid attitude. So I look for ways to acknowledge when people are busy and have a lot going on that in the long run, um, I find people like that do well once they figure out how, you know, uh, Cutco or Color Street can fit into their life. Um, sometimes with top performers, uh, you know, it's important that sometimes we don't always recognize them the way we do. Uh, we don't always put as much effort and energy into people that um, we're trying to help get the business going. It's important to remember not to forget to acknowledge those folks. And you can often say, hey, I know you've been working really hard. That's important. Over time, it's one of the most important things for success. The other's attitude, would you like to learn how to evolve in both of these areas? And also, top people will say, you know, what would it take for you to go to the next level with your results? What motivates you? What do you really want? Um, fi some final thoughts is, you know, we want to work with people we like and enjoy teaching and coping. And I think one of the things that helps you to like people is to get to know them better. Um, we really want to know the people that they're supporting and they want to be known. You know, if, if there's someone you're working with and you really feel like you don't know them or you don't get them yet, you might be one conversation away from building that bridge. Um, we can be a lot more effective when we understand what people really need and want, and we can connect what's great about Color Street with who they're becoming. And anytime you can connect what's great about what you're doing with who they're becoming, that's when the magic really happens. And you know, the resistance come when people feel like that's not me, or I don't, that's not that, you know, there's kind of this internal voice that says that's not me. There was a point with Cutco early on where I wasn't sure if Cutco was me, but the more I got to know it and understand the culture and what was really going on there, the more I realized it, it was me. In fact, it was a big part of helping me become a better version of myself. Um, when you make real connections for fulfillment in the role, that's when long-term success happens. You know, we're not gonna reach everybody and that's okay. Um, I just have always said the philosophy that everybody is worth getting to know. And where it goes from there, um, a lot of that will be up to them and their effort and what they, the decisions they make. I just try to put myself in a position to put someone in a position to keep making decisions to stay, to keep coming back, keep connecting, and one of the ways that I try to do that is just by creating a safe space for people to um, communicate what they're thinking, what they're feeling, and what's really going on. Um, there's some bonus thoughts I wrote down at the bottom of the, of the sheet. And I was going to offer, Deb, that if you guys ever would like me to come back, uh, there's another workshop on the likability factor that's kind of a little bit more in-depth than this. And I just had a couple other little notes there. So at some point in the future, when there's time, um, uh, I, I'd love to just, uh, you know, share some more time and space with you all, if that is good for you, um, and share more. Um, you know, the blessing of being with Cutco for all these years is that um, they've given uh, us a lot of gifts and a lot of knowledge. And um, we're all really in the same industry. We're all really here to support each other. When you're doing well with what you're doing. I really think that helps our business. And so, um, you know, aside from the fact that uh, Deb and Jeff are dear friends, um, I really believe it's great when in this industry we can all help each other and share the best things because 
you know, uh, people, people need all the things that we have. And there's, you know, we, uh, having an abundance mindset of sharing information, I think is really important. Um, so I want to acknowledge that we're at the hour here. Um, and in about uh, seven minutes, I'm going to have to take my son to soccer. <laughs> but I really wanted to um, say thank you for the time. I hope there was something here that was helpful um, that you can use. And I really hope that your weekend goes well and that you uh, all can focus on building bridges with each other. Um, I know in the cultural community, it's been so great that if I'm having a tough day, I can pick up the phone and call Jeff, uh, or he can pick up the phone and call me, and we can relate on that level. Um, that's really helped me through a lot of the Valley moments um, and experienced some really great moments. And, you know, I really believe that when, when Jeff wins, I'm winning too, because we're all kind of in this together. So. Um, if this weekend can result in you all deepening your relationships and helping each other, um, that's got to be good for everybody. So um, thanks again, Deb. And um, I'm open to questions or feedback here, but um, it's really been nice to be with you all. You got to hang up. With me. That's okay, too. No, I'm coming to peek my head to say thank you because I'm over in the corner. That was awesome. I got a lot of good things. Thank you. Thank you. Did, did you see that in the direct sales global thing? You guys are 55 and we're 78. And we're predicted to be 50 next year. I feel really, I good, about, I feel really good about that. I don't even read that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I got a little, my business stuff is not as good as uh, the people stuff. So I'm, I have to get up on top of my game a little bit. No, I sent Jeff a text harassing him, saying we're catching up. Hey, abundance um, mindset. I hope you guys go to number one, and you never forget. Don't forget us over here, at Cutco. Right, right. Yeah. All right, Jackie. I think has a question. I have a question that's going to make me sound super vulnerable. Okay, yeah. I love how you can remember people's birthdays. Tell us your secret. We have a oh, huge look. organization. Like, I would love to do that. And I think it's important, and I feel bad that I haven't been able to do that. Happy birthday, April Shark. <laughs> no kidding. No, I, I, I recommend it. <laughs> but it's April had a birthday week. But tell us how you do that. Well, it's not perfect, first of all, but there's intention around it. Um, I definitely use a, I use a service called Birthday Alarm. And over the years, I've just been putting people's birthdays in when I meet them and talk to them. So if I meet someone or act their, ask for their contact, I just always ask them when their birthday is. And I have in my calendar when it comes up, um, I just set a reminder that when I know someone's birthday, so sometimes I'll open my calendar and it'll say, hey, it's these four people's birthday. And um, I actually, you know, I actually have someone that I work with on my team but there's a just kind of a standard card that I like to send out. And so as you build your business, you may have support. Um, I also use Facebook you know, for people that I'm close with on Facebook. So it's kind of a three pronged approach. I'm always trying to find, I'm always asking that question. Um, I'm, and I have a service that helps me remember uh, as well. And I have help on, I actually have help from someone on my team with that as well. So, you know, what I try to do though is, um, I try to send a text or make a phone call if it's someone that I know. I just try to reach out. And um, again, it's not perfect. The funny thing about this whole conversation is that I forgot Jeff's brother Dave's birthday a few weeks ago. And I called him like three weeks later yesterday. And I said, you know, I said, I want to apologize for my whole self. Uh, I missed your birthday. And, uh, you know, it, it, even if I miss someone's birthday, I will call a week or two later and just own it and say, I'm sorry. And what's often funny about that is when it's someone's birthday, they're always overwhelmed with all the wishes. And Dave said yesterday to me, he said, you know, it was kind of cool. We got to talk and catch up. He's like, I'm glad you missed my birthday. This was nice. So, he, so I stopped being guilty about when I screw up or I don't do it right. And I just started to see how many times I could do it right. So play this game with yourself. See how many birthdays you can remember this year versus how many you forget. And try to look at it from a, a standpoint of if you remember 50 birthdays this year or acknowledge 50 birthdays, just give yourself you know, a check every time you do that. 
it's impossible to be perfect at this. So it's a process, it's an intention, and it's something that every time you do it, whether you text someone, send them a card, put something on Facebook, I, you know, I just think we all, we all love our birthdays and we're, you know, even if we act like we don't. Um, and you know, in some way, being acknowledged at your, the day that you were brought into this world is a pretty important thing. Um, and I think everybody should take their birthday off. And I think everybody should do some cool things for themselves on their birthday. Um, and I think it's a great day to remember people. Um, but I also would share this. Let's say you decide you're just not going to be great at the birthday thing. The random call of awesome or the random text of awesome where you just simply call someone and say, hey, I'm calling for no other reason than just to say I was thinking about you. I love you. Thanks for what you've done for me in my life. And offer some genuine, uh, a genuine thought. If maybe you're not going to be the birthday person, but maybe you're going to be great at the random call of awesome where you just say, hey, it's you only know you're someone in my life I love been awesome the times that we've spent together whatever but i think more important than the timing of the connection is being intentional about making those connections in a way that works for you hope that helps jackie yes are you irresistible i want to work for you <laughs> you know logan logan's birthday is the same as uh dave's did you text Logan? yeah well i did actually I, I did. <laughs> that's funny texted him the next day and I said, I hope you had a wonderful birthday. Of course, um, you're funny. And, huh? but I totally knew it was Dave's birthday too and just totally spaced, but he still, turns out he still loves me. So this is going good. <laughs> good, good. You guys have any other questions for John? This was awesome. Yeah, yeah. Was thank you so much, John. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Do, some, do some uh, chains with us, maybe like a week or two. <laughs> love you. Well, we would. I would love to come back, and I've already told Deb before the call that if, if you guys want me to come back and teach something else anytime, it's it's easy to do, and um, you know, it's again, I think it's it's a really positive thing when across the industry we can share with each, with each other, and when you guys hit number one, I just like a little footnote. Cut to help. <laughs> Oh, uh, thank you, John. I know you had to sacrifice time with your family on a Saturday. Well, so thank you. It's definitely worth it. And uh, just hope you guys have a wonderful time. Love you, Dad. Is Jeff still there? Or did he leave? I don't know. Is Jeff in the kitchen? No. Huh? No, I think he was trying to get out of our hair. All right. Tell the chicken I love them, too. Oh, sh they don't know that nickname. All right. <laughs> I do now. <laughs> All right. Love you, too. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thanks.